Hello friends, so today we're taking a look at the new Chromecast with Google TV. First a little backstory to why I purchased this. I currently have a Fire TV Stick 4K and it works well, but because I have a Google Pixel 5, Amazon makes it difficult for my phone to cast to it. Google and Amazon aren't best of friends, so I'm hoping this upgrade will make it easier for me to share my content to my TV. I cast quite a few things, mainly movies and sometimes games. Another thing that made me want to check out the Google TV is the interface. It looks far nicer than the Amazon one. Only annoying thing with that is that Amazon have recently updated the UI to look much better. Damn you Amazon. But it's not out on the Fire TV Stick 4K yet, as I'm filming this in January 2021. But after the update does finally come, I'll probably do a comparison between the two for you guys. So let me know down in the comments below if there's anything you'd like me to check out or compare. So let's get into the unboxing. The box looks quite nice, it's minimalist and I like it. The main contents in the box include the Chromecast and the remote. They are both packaged in a plain white box with nothing but a simple icon on the box to show which is which. Underneath the box we have the instructions, nicely illustrated, looks simple and easy to follow the setup instructions. Under that we have the plug and wire, I'll go over these later. Opening the box. The Chromecast is protected by a fabric sock. As you can see, I have the white version here. You can also get a pink one or a blue one. The top part of the Chromecast here will be plugged into your HDMI port on the back of your TV. Let's set this aside for now. The remote control looks nice. I like the layout, apart from the side. The volume is on the side of the remote, which makes it kind of annoying to press with your thumb. It's way more comfortable when holding my left hand. I feel like this remote was designed for left-handed people. There are batteries that come with the remote. They will match the colour of the Chromecast you've chosen. Let's pop those in. Cool, it's showing it's ready to set up by displaying a glowing light in the bottom of the controller. Oh, and for the rest of the box, we obviously have the cable here which will plug into the Chromecast and into the plug. The plug has a nice compact design. This part pops out and tucks back in for storage. Now to set up the Google TV. First things first, we're going to need to plug the Chromecast into the TV. Next, connect the cable. After that, we're going to plug in the plug and connect the other end of the wire. After turning on the TV, it went straight to the correct channel. If yours didn't, you may need to change the source to the HDMI port you plugged your Chromecast into. Right, so English United Kingdom is correct for me. Next, it says you'll need to scan the barcode with your Google Home app. We'll get to that in just a second. Now, you want to launch your Google Home app. It will find your Chromecast and ask if you'd like to set it up. So tap this. If you don't already have the Google Home app, I'll put the link in the description for you to download it. You could also set it up on your TV instead, but this way just seemed far easier for me. On the next screen, my home address popped up and I pressed next. This allows you to group all of your Google products under this home group. Just let this load for a second and it will say it's found your Chromecast. Press yes. Give the app camera permission and scan the QR code. Let it load for a second and you'll see your TV screen change. Agree to the terms and conditions and follow the on-screen instructions. You'll be setting up your groups and connecting your Chromecast to your Wi-Fi. After you've connected your Chromecast to the Wi-Fi, it will ask you to sign into your Google account. Now for a software update. We're about halfway through the setup now. Set up what permissions you want the Chromecast to have. This little animation is good, it shows you what things you can say to the Google Assistant. Right, you'll want to follow this option so Google can search through apps to show you what you are looking for. For example, if you say play Breaking Bad, it'll search Netflix to find it and load it up for you ready to play. Voice match can be good here if you want to set up some personal responses. 
I've actually been having problems with this, but I hope Google fixes it soon. Here you want to select some apps that you would like installed. On this page, you can allow Google Photos to be displayed as a slideshow on your TV. I turn this off because I have no idea what kind of photos will pop up and I share my living room with other people, so that could be embarrassing. I've just set mine to art gallery. Now the next screen will say that we finished, but we're not quite done yet. The setup is done, but we've got to wait for the Chromecast to install the apps and load itself up. This shows what we have set up. Continue. Done. Perfect timing. I finished the setup just in time with the Chromecast update. Hopefully you did too. It's just going to load up now and connect the remote for us. After this, you'll be able to see your app being installed, if you have chosen any. Then after this, everything will be finally actually set up and ready to use. So I'm speeding up the startup and the installation of the apps I selected. It took, I think, about four minutes to do this. Yours might be a bit quicker depending on how many apps you chose to install, or it might be a bit slower. This is just a little bit of me now going through the operating system. Just going through the settings, setting things up. I've got to re-log into all my apps again. Kind of just getting used to the operating system. It's definitely a nice upgrade from the Amazon Fire TV. And of course, one of the first things I do is sign into YouTube. Everything's working great for me. I hope it is for you too, guys. One thing I got wrong when I was looking at this is I thought you could set up multiple profiles. So I could have one with the apps I like to use and my flatmate could have another one for the apps he likes to use. Um, he'll be logged into his and I'll be logged into mine. But it turns out you can't do that yet, unfortunately. So hopefully in the future they will make that a feature because I think that's quite an important thing to add. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've got everything sorted and you've enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. That would be great. If you have any questions, please let me know by leaving a comment down in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.